pipes. Be it engineering, be it management, be it commerce, be it law, be it anything that you're going to talk about, the job opportunities exist. Therefore, the other good news all of us need to uh, be very happy with. The next thing that you also need to understand is when the job opportunities exist, what are the requirements? What are the, the kind of expectations for these kinds of job opportunities? It's also been indicated that lots of skills that are required, the kind of skills that we have today may not be sufficient to do very really well in the new job scenario. Therefore, a lot of skills are required. Therefore, a lot of requirements are also there. What are those requirements? One requirement is the technology usage is going to be one of the key things. Therefore, you need to know about technology. Second, the knowledge of mathematics may become very important in the years to come because there are a lot of analytics involved, a new kind of uh, uh, new kind of understanding of things is required. Therefore, the knowledge of mathematics becomes very, very important. The other thing that's also been that the job opportunity in the future may not be of longer duration. Most of them are shorter duration, which are rewarding. Therefore, the job opportunities exist in multiple organizations at the same time, meaning the people may not work in a single organization for a long period of time. Instead of that, they work in multiple organizations for short periods of time because you need to have that expertise to, to offer your services to the job market. There's other predictions we made. The next prediction that's also been made is that the kind of skills that are required are several, but these four are, appear to be very, very important. One, problem solving skills. Problem solving skills since how exactly you can understand the problem, analyze the problem, and try to find a solution. So that is going to be one uh, expertise and skill that's required. Second, self-management. Because there is a lot of uh, uh, things are involved, there are a lot of pressures that are involved. Therefore, self-management becomes very, very important to work in such complex work environment. Then working, the third skill that's required is working with people. That's collaborative skills. Means how best you can work in a team, contribute to the team. There must be individual contribution and the team contribution. How best you can communicate with people, work as a team, work as a group, becomes very, very important in the future. The other skill that's required for the future is technology usage. You need to know what are the technologies that are involved and you have the expertise that if you do not have expertise, pick it up fast. Understand, get it very fast. And how exactly you can plan to for the development of a organization using the technology becomes very, very critical. Therefore, these kinds of things are going to be the needs of the future. Next, coming to the last point, which I would like to mention, is that the new age kind of skills require a different kind of educational system. That is the reason why the national education policy has become very, very relevant. National education policy gives a lot of, uh, I should say, opportunities, lots of freedom, lots of autonomy to utilize and prepare ourselves for a new work scenario. One of the important things that are being proposed in the national education policy is with regard to flexibility. Flexibility means the learning need not be in a single, in the classroom alone. The learning could be in multiple forms. Or is it possible for a student to use these multiple uh, methods of getting the information is going to be one of the key components of the national education policy, which helps to prepare for the thing. Second, is equality important to understand the multidisciplinary learning? Apart from what you're going to study in your major program study or the main program study, if it's possible, get a associated knowledge in the related domains. 
Meaning, while doing a computer science program, is it possible for you to do something in law? Law and computer science may go together. Law, then management and computer science may go together. While doing a computer science program, can you do a minor in management? That helps you to position yourself in a different way than your kind of thing. The next thing is the holistic education. Holistic education means that's exactly what I had mentioned earlier. For self-management, you also need to have the holistic management component or holistic education component. If you get this holistic education component, the self-management becomes that much better, that much easier. Then the most important thing is the social intelligence becomes another important thing, which also being recommended by the national education policy. Then all these kinds of skills and the requirements can be met through the projects, internships, then the learning from multiple uh, sources, both the online, offline, hybrid, all kinds of things are possible in national education policy. Therefore, I would uh, request all of you to be ready for an exciting journey of education in the future. The education of the past and the education of the future a lot more different than you're going to see. You're going to be very comfortable learning things in a different mode of operation, which the experts would tell you very shortly. With these few opening remarks, I thank uh, Sajeevan for providing this opportunity to be a part of this uh, webinar and also thank the organizers for inviting me to be a part of this campus info session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for the brief introduction and setting the context. So here we are students. Now I'd like to invite the industry veteran, Professor Dr. Viraj Kumar, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you to the organizers for inviting me. And uh, Mr. Sajeevan, a real pleasure to interact with you uh, uh, in this electronic way and hopefully one day in, in physical mode. I uh, I would very much love to visit uh, the I, islands. I have I, never come. I am privileged, sir. I am privileged. You are always welcome. And and we'll, I hope 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 this can happen. All right. So for the students, uh, following on from um, uh, Dr. K N B Murthy's uh, talk, I'm going to I'm going to give you two demos, and these are demos of technologies that exist today, and I think they shape or should shape how you think about. Uh, a career in computing, right? Um, so it's a beautiful Saturday here in uh, in uh, Bangalore. I just looked at the forecast. I believe it's nice and sunny in Port Blair. So I hope it's a beautiful Saturday where you are. And I'm going to take this beautiful Saturday and I'm going to scare you. And I'm going to scare you not because I'm a mean person, but I hope that this will make you reflect and think really carefully about uh, your trajectory going forward. So the idea, the purpose is um, is is, a, is an important one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, as you can see right now, is just a spreadsheet that I'm sharing with you. And one thing I want to let you know, the spreadsheet is basically empty, right? But what has got some data in, in column A? And this is a task that you see often when you're doing, you know, data science, any amount of, you know, data operations, you, you have to deal with data. Now you're going to do so use, learn more sophisticated tools than spreadsheets. But for now, just to keep it simple, I'm going to show this uh, to you with a uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to uh, analyze this data. This data is from uh, uh, the US Congress from years ago. So the equivalent of their Lok Sabha. And uh, this has information about, you know, various people in the Congress, their names, uh, R or D is depending if they're Republican or Democrat, and you know, which state and district they represent in the US, and how much money a certain uh, special interest group gave their campaign. And then the last thing is how they voted on a certain issue. And the first thing you can see looking at this, uh, this table is that, you know, they gave a large amount of money and they voted no. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this table, you will see that if they were given no money, then many of them voted yes. 
Not everyone, but many of them voted yes. So in some sense, perhaps this is an indication that the money influenced the vote. This is actually a debate I was having with a colleague of mine uh, when I was a student. They were saying, oh, there's so much corruption in India. And I was trying to say, no, there's corruption all over the world. And I was using this data to try and make my argument. So let's say the task that we want to do is very simple. We want to you know, pull out from this data, we want to pull out the number. Right, and then how they voted. Right, so if any of you know uh, Excel formulas, and this would be a skill maybe you would learn somewhere, uh, you know, you could uh, program this since it's a programming task. Right, but what I'm going to show you is a technology that is at least, um, well, now nine years old, almost a decade old. So this is already there. You probably, some of you may be aware of it in, in uh, spreadsheet software like Excel, Google Sheets, they all have this. Right, uh, I don't have to know how to write Excel. Here's what I will do. I, I need to pull out this number 526600, right? So I'll write it down. I'll say as an example from this row, I want to pull out the number 526600, right? And when I press enter, okay, I've given the example for the first row. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to press control E in Excel. So what that means is take the example that I have above and using that example, it has automatically generated. Now notice up here you will see there's no formula. It's just literally just found out from those examples what I wanted to do. Right? What does this mean and why is this scary? Imagine you had spent a lot of your time learning how to program in Excel. That was your skill set that you had. Right? As Dr. K. N. B. Murthy rightly said, you have to learn your skill set and then go and apply it. So you would have invested some time uh, learning the skill. Well, what this software means is what this technology means is that that skill is no longer relevant in the market, right? Uh, anyone who doesn't know programming can do what I just showed you. And now your skill is not relevant. Now that this is not strictly true. Uh, there are some things that you cannot do in this manner, right? Uh, but the, the, the trajectory of where these technologies are going is something I want you to reflect on. I'm going to give you one more example just to make the point and this is not with spreadsheets. This is with something much more relevant to your studies, uh, which is imagine you were learning a programming language like Python. So what I'm now sharing with you is my screen where here is a problem that is fairly typical that we get our students to, to learn how to do. So at the end of your first semester, when you've taken your first programming course, let's say it's in Python, uh, you should be able to write a function like this, right? I mean, the, the details are not so important. The point is that, you know, of this level of complexity, you should be able to do. And by the way, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, my respected colleagues from industry will confirm this. Many times when industry are, are filtering faculty, uh, st students to see if they were are job ready, they will first ask them questions of this nature. You know, this is this is just one example. There could be lots of other examples, but roughly questions of this nature. Can you solve this? Right? So what I'm showing you is this on a on a site called OpenAI, which has uh, you know this amazing capability. I just give it this natural language specification and I hit submit, and it's going to write the solution and by the way it's going to give some examples it's automatically generating some examples uh, to see if uh, it's got it right okay so but the actual solution the thing that i care about is these three lines of uh, python code now you might say well it's only three lines it can only do simple things uh, we've been investigating this and it can do some very sophisticated things so the thing i want you to keep in mind as students is you're going to invest some time quite a bit of your time learning some skills. At the same time, the world is changing underneath you. So the most important thing I would add to the list of very important things that um, Dr. K. N. B. Murthy spoke about is you have to be aware of this changing technological underground. And as a computer scientist in a computer science degree, you have the uh, front seat in such changes, right? So you will be in an excellent position to be to witness what these changes look like um, and to plan ahead what this will mean. So one of the consequences of technologies like this is that the skill of writing code 
the ability to write code is perhaps something that technology will be able to do. What is much more important is to you to have the skill to say, you know, okay, given this, given this text, if this is the goal of what the program was supposed to do, does this piece of code, auto-generated code, does it meet the specification? That is a much harder skill for the system to automate. But you as a human, if you develop those skills, uh, those will be much more valuable. Okay, so to be able to recognize, to be able to translate, sometimes this this uh, a client will tell you that they want something done, but they won't tell it to you in as a, in as precise a language as this. In fact, if you look at this language carefully, you'll find that it's actually not one hundred percent precise. There's a lot of ambiguity. This is the reality. This is where communication becomes extremely important. This is where, in for example, the national education policy, we stress the importance of communication that becomes extremely important. So in some sense, the skill of writing Excel formulas and the skill of writing Python code is not the most important thing in the immediate future, as we can see. Tomorrow, other skills might similarly get swallowed up by this monster called AI. This is something you have to be aware of. We cannot run away from it. I said at the start, I'm going to scare you, but I'm going to scare you just to illustrate a point that these kinds of technologies exist. They're front and center. You're looking for a computer science education so that you have a front row seat into these technologies. You will be much better equipped than many of your uh, friends and colleagues um, who are not as aware as you will be about the power of these technologies. Of course, when you get your hands on these technologies, your ability to use them uh, for the good of society is a very, very important responsibility that you will have. So I'm hoping that you will uh, consider uh, these issues as well when you look at uh, your potential trajectory in computer science. There are, of course, many, many jobs uh, that will open up to you uh, as a computer scientist. But I want you to be aware through this short presentation that these are some of the realities that you will face. So I will end here. It's a very short uh, two demos I wanted to share with you. And if you have uh, questions, uh, you can put them uh, in the in the q and I think for all of us as we're talking, and we'll be happy to respond. Over to you, Mr. Shinde. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Anand would like to invite Professor Mr. Pankaj Bande. Over to you, sir. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, is my screen visible, sir? Can anyone? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So I'm just trying to, you know, extend what Professor Vijay Kumar. Uh, uh, it's always, you know, uh, I mean, it's always a keen listener when he speaks with his 36 years of experience and the kind of examples, you know, which he brings. Uh, there's always so much to learn and, you know, know while Professor Murthy is always there. But uh, thank you so much for providing me an opportunity to present, you know. So just to extend, you know, what uh, Professor Vijay has said uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, uh, so, so my colleague has said is in terms of that, Conversational AI, like GPT-3 being one of the example, uh, what we have done as a part of the industry is that we are the first one in the world who have built a voice developer tool. Like a job of future has, a, has to begin somewhere, right? And someone has to start doing it. So being in India, being the only company in the world who has built a voice developer tool for, for literally K-12 children to program. So if you are, you know, in the domain and you are trying to enter into engineering, we have built this tool for school students. And what you can see is that this doesn't have programming language as such, any specific programming language, but it is the most powerful programmable developer tool. And that's where, you know, the world is moving towards. Up till now, Anything and everything which we used to do, we used to push it either to a computer or to a mobile phone. Today, machines are coming towards us, just like whatever we saw as an example in GPT-3, that I talk to a machine and get a Python code generated. 
so that machine is like a human resource we treat as human in this case the machine itself is a resource which understands human language and does a task for you so in this developer tool what we are trying to say is that okay most of you might be aware or rather all of you might be aware about alexa and google assistant which are there either in mobile phones or echo devices or televisions or inside cars and all that how do i program these devices asking alexa to tell a joke set a timer play music is a general intelligence which alexa a device like alexa or google assistant has but the ability to program these devices and then the power of the machines coming close to us so i don't program it in the language the device understands but i program it in the language which i am comfortable in so this very program which is in front of you shows an example of programming alexa to control a hardware device and you will be able to talk to that hardware device in hindi so you can see how beautiful it comes that my intention is to talk to a specific hardware in hindi and that hardware is is nothing but light emitting diodes leds and because they emit light of various colors i have picked up some of the colors as the slot variables lal hara neela pila safed cyan and all of that and then i have the examples of utterances so what are these utterances actually so the examples which actually will describe my intent to interact with the hardware so i'm teaching this to alexa right i'm programming this to alexa that i have an intention to talk to alexa in hindi and i have chosen some of the colors which i want the hardware to respond to and i am giving alexa some of the examples mujhe ye color means mujhe slot value which you see here rang dikhao so if i pick one of the slot values mujhe lal rang dikhao मेरा पसंदीदा एंड देन पिक अ कलर रंग दिखाओ क्या आप लाल रंग को चमका सकते हो सो यू नो व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू से हियर इज दैट वी आर प्रोग्रामिंग द मोस्ट एडवांस कॉन्वर्सेशनल एआई इन द वर्ल्ड विदाउट एनी प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज दैट्स वेयर द वर्ल्ड इज मूविंग टुवर्ड्स हु वुड वांट अ प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज टू बी लर्न इट्स नॉट दैट you will not learn you will still learn the worlds of python and c and c++ you have to because eventually the the ai will do its job to a certain level but for you to understand the capability of ai you have to compete and be equally there right but at the same time the job of present and the future is increasingly becoming being able to leverage ai to get a certain task done right so then comes to responses so if slot value is this this equals to lal then i am actually doing a api call and all of that right so in a single you know uh program what you see are two different worlds altogether that i am talking about you know a cloud communication via an api and uh, my cloud is still programmed using 19 programming languages in precise we have our this very portal is being programmed using 19 programming languages but the voice developer tool is, tool is allowing you to just communicate with the hardware which is there with us in human language and you pick the language you pick the language and you deploy this and now comes the major important thing that where do you want to deploy it so as i said that you know everything and anything in today's world is all about you know we build app we have created the entire world in the mobile phone and we are adjusting to the machine like a mobile as a machine or a computer as a machine this program which is in front of you can be deployed to a mobile to a pc to a television to a car to any device like a refrigerator to a microwave oven to a wall clock all it needs is an inbuilt voice assistant should be there right and this program will be uh, you know deployed to any place where you are and you are able to interact with this program in your own native language in this case we have picked up hindi as an example right so you know this is where the world is moving towards and why this is most relevant for students who are there on this webinar is because this is what is the kind of programming you will be doing when you become part of engineering first of all 
and you know dayanand sagar institute is a place wherein you have seen the introduction video the kind of collaborations uh, dsu has with industries and uh, i also represent the industry and there is a very good collaboration with me and my company at dsu level is that you get exposure to such things you have the openness the alignment as professor murthy was saying to national education policy all of it is there the the kind of vision dr murthy has and the kind of you know he himself being such a resourceful person you 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 get the opportunity to you know work in the latest and the greatest and then you see yourself you know being relevant to industry right so you might say that hey man you are showing so many things show us the demo of this is really working right so let me show you how this actually results into a a skill and how this uh, you know practically works out how that hardware interaction actually works out while this video has um, a far complex and that was play buzzer music and you is the audio coming sir yeah yeah, yeah. yes we do more activities show me tricolor green this is tricolor green show me tricolor blue hey Who is gear glowing tricolor blue? Show me tricolor red. You can see red in tricolor. Turn off tricolor red. Who is gear turning off tricolor red? So what you are able to see here is that that example program was for a specific LED, and while in that it was the Hindi interaction, while this program is done and trying to showcase the 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 English interaction of it. but the key thing over here is that it is possible for today in today's world it is possible for you to program and i don't know whether you people are aware but today amitabh bachchan's voice the ai voice of amitabh bachchan is available for just 150 rupees on any alexa device so you know you can say hey amitabh turn on my tv hey amitabh play star movies and you know amitabh bachchan comes back and lijiye saab aapka star movies hazir hai or you can say hey amitabh amit ji rather that wake word uh, provided by uh, you know uh, the the ai uh, part of it is that you know amit ji zara ek 5 minute ka timer to set kijiye lijiye pankaj aapka 5 minute ka timer hazir hai and then after 5 minutes pankaj aapka 5 minute ka timer khatam ho gaya hai then something of this sort is possible today just at a minimal cost of 150 rupees so you won't be just programming you know ai voices but you will be programming real world voices be it a cricketer like uh, uh, virat kohli or uh, a badminton superstar like pv sindhu or a uh, you know uh, an, an actor like amitabh bachchan all the voices will be available in an ai format and it is being said that by 2028 it will be impossible to differentiate whether you are able whether you are talking to a human or a ai assistant such is the level of you know advancement which has happened in conversational ai and machine learning and you can see that this has to be still presented to people in a learning learnable format and that is what i am trying to showcase you that you know it is possible for anyone to literally you know work on these uh, technologies today itself at a programming level and we have done it for school going children think about what level of expectations are there when it is about you people now getting into engineering and then what are the companies which are coming together you know uh, when when this is this is all happening so all the companies which are coming together they have created a voice interoperability initiative and while it is called voice it is all conversational ai behind the scene look at you know the kind of companies facebook mi intel qualcomm so just if you look at the members you will be programming for one device if it is a lg tv and if it is a it has inbuilt google assistant and amazon alexa then you will be able to say hey alexa in the tv increase the volume so then tv will respond that's not my job that is lg assistant you want me to connect you to lg assistant uh, then you will say yes yes ask lg assistant to do that so imagine one hardware having multiple agents and you people your generation will be programmed and these are all ai assistant this is this is where the world is moving towards and if you think that this is just at research level no this is all full of actual demonstrations today these are the actual robots and uh, you know products which are there in the market which actually like this refrigerator from samsung has having samsung's own bixby 
assistant and then it has got Alexa inbuilt and you can talk to the refrigerator, you can talk to Alexa here and whatever you want, even the screen also responds to that. So watch these videos and you will understand that, oh my God, the world of computer science is not just limited to computer science, but I have to imagine computer science in a refrigerator. I have to imagine computer science in a television. I have to imagine, you know, computer science being put on a movable robot or just talk to, you know, um, maybe a, 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 a interaction device like this, right? So how does it work out? You, you don't straight away work on this thing. So as an example, you know, if I have to show another uh, simple video, how, how it boils down to a simple interaction like this, uh, look at this one. So I have a mobile charger and uh, another interaction which I'm doing. So a smart switch module, simple relay. Now you do a simple hardware connection with a device. Alexa. So what, what you see is there is a programmable hardware device. There is this simple plug-in switch to which the charger is connected. And inside this, the relay module is fit. And now I am interacting with this charger itself, right? So open with gear. So I'm talking you to can ask hardware. me to glow a color, display alphabets and numbers, play buzzer music, and you can do more activities. Turn on charger. Turning on charger. So what you see is that this specific device started charging because I just spoke to a skill on my mobile and it actually interacted with this hardware and it started this. So, you know, I might have forgotten something. I am driving in a car. So this assistant is available in car. And you might say that, you know, turn on the charger or turn off something which I have forgotten or whatever activity you want to do. Then the world which is coming in front of you is all conversational AI driven and you will be the programmers of it, right? And that's what I, you know, I, I have given you a glimpse of it here that the programming is possible in how many languages? These many languages across the world. And when I say you can program it, it gets deployed to German Alexa, or Australian Alexa or Canada Alexa or UK Alexa, whatever you want, you will be able to write the program here itself and you know straight away uh, start doing the actual interaction in any world in device in the world. So if this is there today, you know, just imagine what kind of a future you guys are uh, expected to face that, right? So this is what uh, I had, uh, you know, as a part of my small presentation, I hope uh, I'm able to, you know, give you an idea whether it is about robots or smart lights or Hindi language or any of these things. Uh, the conversational AI and machine learning is an area which is going to be, you know, uh, a, a good one. And at DSU, you have the chance of really, you know, really working on it. So thank you so much, sir, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, this is what I had from my side. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pankaj. It's a greater insight for the students to see the deployment of today, the conversational AI and how it is going to make them absolutely ready for the kind of applications that have been done in the market. Students need to understand one thing. Now they're going to come in this year. They still have four years to go. They need to keep in mind, what is it, you know, which area is the technology moving towards? And if you see AIML, you look at cybersecurity, you look at cloud technology and DevOps, you look at data science, all of them are here to stay. They're going to be here for some time. And it's, it's, it's going to be really insightful for students when they start looking at all of this and then gearing up themselves to see how good they could make their career with. Now, looking at what is it that we need to, you know, what is it that we offer to you at Dian and Sagar University? Well, uh, as, as we said in the beginning, we are a multidisciplinary university, which means students could be, choose their major as well as their minors. And it could be from different disciplines, which is what today is the need of the hour. It's not a fixed syllabus that is going to be given to you. Every particular year you could decide in terms of the minor subjects or the minor specializations that you could choose from. And if you are in touch with your HODs, you are in touch with the professors, you are in touch with the industry activities, you have been reading a lot, 
you will definitely be able to choose something that is more beneficial from you from an industrial application point of view. With this, we would like to uh, come to an end for the session today, which we organized on the computer science engineering, the new age era that is moving on to. I would like to thank Mr. Sajivan for organizing this activity. There are a lot of students today who are seeing this on the, on the YouTube. This is being uh, also framed on the YouTube because there are network issues in most of the places in uh, Port Blair. There are many students who are seeing this and many of them have requested us to share the recordings of this because they have some issues in terms of the network. So with this, I would like to thank all the distinguished speakers for their time today on a Saturday morning to come and talk about this technology with the aspiring students from Andaman and Nicobar. We are really grateful to you for your time and we look forward to similar sessions happening in the near future. Uh, thanks to all, all, all the distinguished speakers and a big thanks to Mr. Sajivan and the entire team from Andaman and Nicobar who are currently online listening to this. You could also log into our website for all aspirant students Please log into our website, dsu.edu.in, or you could even call the landline numbers that have been shown, 080-4646-1800. And our career experts will be able to help you with all your queries that you have regarding choosing a program, choosing the university, or any other details that you would like to ask. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you soon. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Sajib. Yeah, yeah, one second, sir. I'll, I'll just take a second to thank uh, Professor Viraj as well as Mr. Pankaj for uh, the vast uh, experience that they have, they have shared with us. Our students and, of course, our uh, uh, teachers would uh, really benefit out of the information that was shared. And I thank Dr. Murthy as well as you, Mr. Shinde, for uh, uh, giving us the great opportunity and exposure uh, for the uh, future of our students, especially uh, since we are hailing from a very, very far, far off place, cut off from mainland. And I hope that uh, this uh, uh, session would do a good, uh, good lot of uh, thing for the uh, students of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, sir. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you from Bye. the Thank entire you. DSC family. Thank you. Thanks a lot.